Hey guys, I hope this video finds you well and I hope I can help you graph some rational functions today, okay? All right, we're being asked to graph this and what I wanted to quickly show you first is an idea of what some of these graphs look like. Now, it probably goes without being said, but I'll say it anyway. This is not all the ways that these can look right, but this gives you a good idea of kind of what to expect when you're graphing these. This is, this is the types of things to expect, okay? Now, when we graph these, we follow some steps. Yes! We love it when we have steps to follow, okay? All right, so we have four steps here. First, we're going to factor. Second, we're going to find our asymptotes and check for holes. Three, we are going to find our x and y in intercepts. And fourth, we're going to figure out the general shape of our graph using our preferred method, which we will talk about once we get there, okay? All right, so first of all, we are looking, oh no, first, huh, we got to factor first, right? So my numerator is factored. We've got x minus one on top. On bottom, if I factor that, it's a perfect square. It's going to be, not a perfect square, a difference of squares, sorry. <laughs> x plus two times x minus one. If you need a review on how I did that quickly, I'll link a video in the corner, okay? All right, we're factored. Step one, done. All right, step two is our asymptotes. First, we're going to look, well, actually, before I say that, really, we look for holes first. So a hole occurs when you have something in the top and the bottom that cancel, okay? So pretend when I had factored these that this one had been x minus 1 and those had canceled. That would be when you have a hole in your graph. And I will link a video in the corner with an example of this. But for this example, we don't have any. We checked. There's none right? Okay, now we can focus in on our vertical asymptotes, okay? If you've been doing math for any amount of time, you probably know that zeros in the denominator are bad news. We don't deal with them, okay? So vertical asymptotes occur where my denominator would be equal to zero, okay? So to figure that out, I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm going to have x plus two equals zero and x minus two equals zero, okay? Here I'd subtract 2 from both sides, get x equals negative 2. Add 2 to both sides and get x equals 2. Okay, those are my vertical asymptotes. We represent these on our graph with a dotted line. Okay, if I can find my straight edge. Here it is. Okay, <laughs> hang with me. Here it is. All right, so I'm going to put a dotted line at negative 2 and at 2. Okay. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you probably will not actually see a dotted line on your graphing calculator. Okay. But when we do it by hand, we like to represent it with this dotted line. Okay. So there's the negative one. Well, negative two, the negative one that is negative two and two. Okay. Uh, uh, there we go. Those are my dotted lines. Okay. All right. Next, we are going to look at our horizontal and slope asymptote. You will not have both, okay? For these guys, we follow some rules, okay? And I'm going to show them to you right now. <laughs> these are our horizontal asymptote rules, okay? Um, if you're wondering where these rules come from, I'll link a video in the corner. These have to do with our degree, okay, which is your biggest exponent in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so you'll see here in the denominator, my biggest exponent is two. In the numerator, you're like, oh, I don't see any um, exponents. This is really like x to the first, right? So my biggest exponent on top is one, okay? If our top degree is greater than the bottom degree, there's no horizontal asymptote. You check for a slant by doing long division, okay? Um, if they're equal to each other, you divide leading coefficients. If your top degree is less than your bottom degree, like in this example, your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, okay? So for this guy, my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. There is no slant asymptote, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and represent this on my graph with a dotted line. It's kind of hard to see when it's right on the x-axis, so I'm just going to kind of draw it on the edges so you can see that it's there, right? So kind of like that. But it really goes across the whole thing, right? Okay, 
Interesting thing about horizontal and slant asymptotes, they can be crossed, okay? Vertical ones will not be crossed. If you end up with your graph crossing them, go back and check because you must have just done an incorrect calculation or something. But the horizontal and slant ones can be crossed. Now, I know what you might be thinking because I thought the same thing. What is the point of them if they can be crossed, right? <laughs> well, they're still important because they help us figure out the shape of our graph. And also, they're the areas that our graph is approaching, okay? And hopefully, you'll kind of see what I mean as we go through this, okay? All right, the next thing we do is we find our x-intercepts. Let me hurry and grab a card. I just don't want to, like, jumble up this paper with a million things. So we are looking for our x-intercept. There can be more than one, okay? So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to set y equal to zero, okay? So I'm going to have zero equals x minus one over, I could write either one, it doesn't matter, x squared minus four, okay? Now to solve this, I would multiply both sides by x squared minus four, right? And what happens over here is it just ends up being zero, and what happens over here is these guys cancel and I end up with X minus one over here. Add one to both sides and I end up with X equals one, okay? Now this isn't a line like my asymptote, right? This is a point. When I plugged in zero for Y, I got one for X. So I know that my graph crosses that point, okay? So my X intercept is at one, zero. And just so you know, that is the only place that my graph will cross the x-intercept, that will come in handy to know later, okay? So I know my graph crosses right there, okay? All right, let's go ahead and find our y-intercept now. Draw a little line here, separate those guys. To find my y-intercept, which because this is a function, there will only be one y-intercept. Okay. All right. So to find that, we're going to plug in zero for X. So I'm going to have Y equals zero minus one over zero squared minus four. Okay. When I do that, I end up with negative one on top, negative four on bottom, which simplifies down to a positive one fourth, right? So when I plugged in zero for X, I got one fourth for Y. Okay, that is my y-intercept. So, 0, 1, fourth. Okay, now I know it's a fraction and those can be a little intimidating, but just remember this is a general idea of your graph. You don't have to have it perfectly at 1 fourth. Just have it, you know, look, look pretty good, a little above that 0, right? So that's about 0, 1 fourth, okay? All right, I have my asymptotes and I have two points where I know that my graph crosses, right? So what from here, okay? <laughs> so I need to have basically a graph represented everywhere except at these vertical asymptotes. What do I mean by that, okay? I could plug in like negative 100 for X and I would get a Y, right? I would get a point. I could plug in negative one, I'd get a point, and I could plug in like positive 50 for X and I'd get a Y, okay? The only places or the only number that I could plug in and I won't get a point, I'll get undefined, is at these vertical asymptotes because it would make the denominator zero. But everywhere else on my graph, there should be a graph, right? <laughs> so we need to figure out what the graph's doing to the left of this asymptote, what it's doing in the middle, and what it's doing on the right, okay? So what is helpful about this one is Remember I said our x-intercept was at one zero, and that is our only x-intercept. That is the only place my graph will cross the x-axis, okay? So basically, I need to know is if this graph will be up here or down here, okay? Now, you see I'm kind of doing a curving motion. You might be like, well, how do you know it's a curve? That's because it is approaching both of these asymptotes, okay? As you do these more and more, you'll get more used to what they look like and more comfortable with it, okay? So really, all I need to know is if this is going to be up here or down here, right? So first option is we can just pick a point 
like negative four or negative 10, plug it in for X, get a Y and get that ordered pair and graph it, right? Another option that we can do with this graph, it may not work every single time, but for this graph we can, is I really just need to know if when I plug in these numbers, am I going to get a positive number or a negative number, right? And that'll tell me what my graph looks like, okay? So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm just gonna pick negative 10, right? This is called sign analysis. I'm gonna plug in negative 10 and I'm not so concerned about what number output I get. I really just care if it's positive or negative, okay? So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. If I plug in negative 10, I'm going to get negative 10 minus 1, which will give me a negative, right? Over negative 10 plus 2 would give me a negative, and negative 10 minus 2 would also give me a negative, right? So on top, I would have a negative. On bottom, I would have a negative times a negative, which would give me a positive. And then a negative divided by a positive is negative, right? If you want to actually plug in negative 10 and figure out what that negative number is, go for it, okay? But all I really care about is that it's negative, right? So when I plugged in negative 10, I got a negative number. I don't know exactly what the number is, but I know it's negative. So I know that this side of my graph is going to look a little something like this. And again, I know it's that curve shape because I've graphed a lot of these and I know the graph is approaching both of those asymptotes, okay? All right, from here, we have that x-intercept right there and my y-intercept is right there, which tells me on this side, I am approaching the asymptote in this direction. Okay, I'm going up. I know it's not going to go down from here because that would cross my x-axis again. And I know that I don't have another point to cross at the x-axis, right? Because I figured it out here. Okay, so from here, I still need to know what it does in this little section, right? We care even about this little section. Okay, what does my graph do there? Does it go up like a parabola or does it go down towards that vertical asymptote, right? Remember, we have examples of both here. We have this one that's like a parabola and we have this one where it goes down, right? So I need to figure out what this one does. So I'm going to pick a point. Let's pick 1.5. That's probably the easiest one to pick in that region. I don't have a lot of choices of easy ones. So I'm gonna plug in 1.5. And again, because of the way that this graph is set up, I don't really care about what the number is. I care if it's positive or negative above the x-axis or below it, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens. When I plug in 1.5 for x, I get a positive on top over 1.5 plus two would be a positive number. And then 1.5 minus two would be a negative number, okay? So on top, I'm gonna have positive. On bottom, a positive times a negative would give me a negative, and a positive divided by a negative would give me a negative, okay? Again, if you don't like this whole sign analysis thing, you're like, I'd rather just figure out the number, go for it, okay? But I see when I plugged in 1.5, I don't know what the exact number would be, but I know it would be negative, which means this little section of my graph is going to approach this asymptote in the negative region. Okay, it's going to go like that, okay? Okay, look, I have all these numbers accounted for, except I need to know this right side, okay? Again, is it going to be up here or down here, okay? So let's pick a number to plug in. Let's plug in a positive 10. Sometimes when you're doing sign analysis, it's easier to pick like bigger numbers because it can kind of be more obvious if it's positive or negative, right? So, I mean, if you want to plug in 100, you could, okay? All right, so let's plug in 10 minus 1 would give me a positive, right? Over 10 plus 2 would give me a positive, and 10 minus 2 would give me a positive. Well, we've got a positive over two positives, which would leave me with a positive, right? So when I plug in 10, I don't know what the exact number answer would be, but I know it's positive. 
So it's going to be up here. Okay. Look at that. Okay. So that is not a perfect representation, right? Because we're not looking for perfection, but a general idea of what this graph looks like. Okay. The last optional step, but I highly recommend is to go ahead and plug this into a graphing calculator or into Desmos online and make sure that your thinking was right, that that you have an accurate representation, right? Now, you don't want to just start right off with that because, well, it, if your graph has a hole, it's really hard to see. Anyway, it's always good to start by doing it by hand and then check yourself with that graphing calculator. And if it doesn't match, go ahead and look back and figure out where you might have slipped up, okay? All right, I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I will link a whole playlist for you. Thanks.